this is a TaxCast Extra from the Tax Justice Network with me, Naomi Fowler, and Richard Murphy of Tax Research UK. Today our special subject is unitary tax and why it's a good idea. Justice Network itself is calling for a unitary tax, which would tax companies according to the genuine economic substance of what they do and where they do it. To me, that seems like it's a blindingly obvious good idea. Um, Now, it's based on uh, three things, I believe, physical assets of the company, their workforce, where they're actually based, who they're employing, and their sales and transfers. And the important point, I think, is that it's ignoring all the internal transfers with companies like Starbucks. Yeah, let's talk about why we need to change the international tax system. Going right back to 1935, when the League of Nations decided on this issue, there were just two choices available. One is what is actually used, which is called arm's length pricing, and the other is called unitary taxation. Now, both are pretty much of a mouthful and say something about accountants' ability to brand a product, which looks to be appalling. But the point about them is that they are very different in the way they work. Arm's length pricing, which is what we've got, assumes that every company within a group is separate and independent and should be taxed as if it is separate and independent. Now, unfortunately, the only reason why the companies are in a group, which is the reality of the situation, is that more profit is made because they are actually under common ownership than would be the case if they were separate and independent. But of course, that excess profit under arm's length pricing rules can't be taxed because the prices charged between each company within the group are adjusted so only the level that would be earned if they were separate and independent is taxed. Therefore, some profit can always, technically at least, float free under the OECD's arm's length pricing method. And that's exactly what, for example, it looks like Starbucks are using to transfer profits into Switzerland on their coffee beans. Now, if that's true, the whole logic of the OECD approach to this problem is fundamentally intellectually flawed and nothing that can be done to tinker with that system will resolve the problem. So the alternative is unitary taxation. That assumes really quite realistically that there is a group of companies because there is. And it says it doesn't matter how many subsidiaries you put in place inside this group, all we're interested in is there's one group and countries in which it trades. And it identifies those countries and it identifies them by where sales take place. That's the destination of the sales, not where they come from, because it would be terribly easy, of course, otherwise for someone to make all their sales from the Cayman Islands where there's no corporation tax. So we have to look at where the sales go to and we have to look at where employees are. Um, And you can actually either count employees by literally their physical number or by the amount you pay them, one of the two, and where the physical assets are. We only use physical assets, um, which are fairly well regulated, by the way, in accounting terms. So this is not likely to be subject to major abuse. Of course, there's a risk, but not likely to be subject to major accounting abuse. We only count the physical assets because it's incredibly easy, of course, to relocate what we call intangible assets. That's intellectual property and copyrights and patents and so on. And, of course, those are all the things which give rise to much of the problem with regard to transfer pricing at present. So we take the group profits as a whole and we say, where are your people, where are your sales, where are your assets? And split the group profit one third, one third, one third. And let's do a very simple numerical example. Suppose that there is a million of profit. Well, that means that 333,000 of dollars or euros or pounds, doesn't matter what, are going to be split on the basis of sales. And so if a country has got 30% of the worldwide sales of that group, then 30% of 333,000 will be allocated to that country as profit. That's 100,000. Now, let's look at people. Let's suppose half the people are in that country. Well, then we can split half of 333,000 again. So that's 166,000, near enough, is going to that country. And suppose all the physical assets, I'm being slightly absurd, I guess, by saying all, but let's just take that as an example, of the physical assets are in that country, that's 333,000. So of the total profits of a million, 100,000 will go there because of sales, 
166,000 will go there because of people and 333,000 will go there because of where the physical assets are. And that, in total, in my estimation, comes to near enough 600,000 out of the total 1 million will be taxed in that particular country which has those ratios, leaving 400,000 somewhere else. Now, what's really important about that is that if the formula works so rationally, and it does then it's entirely up to the country from then on to decide what tax rate it wants to apply and what allowances it wants to give on investment as well. Now, those are the other variables in working out how much corporation tax is payable. Variable one is the profit. Variable two is the tax rate. Variable three is the allowances. And you take the allowances of the profit and multiply the tax rate and you come up with the bill. But the countries suddenly have control over allowances and tax rate. So actually, tax competition curiously still exists, but it becomes very transparent, and it's designed to promote real economic activity, and you can see its consequences because the profit has been allocated. So we suddenly get a controlled international taxation environment where if competition is going to happen, at least it's comprehensible and it relates to economic reality, and each country can make its own choices about tax fairly and independently because the problem of the abuse of tax systems by multinational companies artificially reallocating profits has gone away. That's unitary taxation in a nutshell. Could it work? Yes. How do we know it can work? Because it is used to allocate profits between states within the USA now. Now, not perfectly, because there are boundaries to the USA, in other words, this only works within the shores of the United States. And there are some states that don't charge corporate tax, which inevitably means that there are some issues there. But within those parameters, there's a lot of experience of how this works, how people have tried to abuse it, and how we can prevent that happening elsewhere. So this is a real alternative tax model. Thanks, Richard. That was a TaxCast Extra from the Tax Justice Network. For the full monthly TaxCast with news and analysis on corruption and some solutions, find us on www.tackletaxhavens.com stroke TaxCast. Thank you.